Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be reporting on Orin and Orson West, the toddler boys who are missing from California City, California. I've been digging into this case and I will be putting a couple of links in the description of some other YouTubers that have been covering this that I found you know, some of their information to be very enlightening and then I went and verified sources in order to be able to bring it to you from my point of view and on my channel. And we are going to start from the very beginning. The boy's birth mother is Ryan Dean and Oren and Orson are their adopted names. They were officially adopted in April of 2019 by Trezel and Jacqueline West. And Oren was born Sincere Pettis on August 4th, 2016. Orson was born Classic Pettis and he was born June 11th, 2017. And I know a lot of people have been speculating about how Ryan Dean lost custody of her children. Not that it's really pertinent to what's happened to them now, but I did dig into that and have actually come across her own statement, which is that when she was pregnant with Orson, she was at work and Oren was being taken care of, and I'm using their adoptive names. Oren was being cared for by someone else while she was at work, and she came home, or to the sitter, I'm not sure which exactly, but when she saw Oren, when she got home from work, he was fussier than usual. Uh, she quickly discerned that there was something wrong, so she took him to the emergency room, where it was found that he had broken his leg. Now this was prior to Orson's birth, so Oren was not quite a year old yet. Just so remember, Orson was born in June and Oren wouldn't have turned one until August. Anyway, at the hospital, CPS, which is Children's Protective Services, stepped in and they took custody of Oren due to the broken leg. Ryan obviously was in a lot of distress and stress over this and she attributes the stress of her difficulties with CPS and losing Oren to her going into premature labor with Orson who, like I said, was born on June 11th, 2017 and he was premature, so he stayed in the NICU weighing just four pounds at birth. And he was also taken into protective custody at some point. Both boys were first placed with someone other than the Wests. And from what I can tell, the person who had Oren and I don't know if she ended up having both boys, but the person who had Oren during this juncture is still friends with Ryan and actually went with Ryan to California City to look for the boys. And while Oren was with this lady, there are pictures of him that Ryan had in her possession and he's a very healthy and happy looking little guy and the Wests ended up having custody in 2018 as foster parents to the two boys and Ryan was still allowed to have visits with the boys and she had not lost her parental rights yet at that point and she needed to ask the Wests to give the boys haircuts and things like that because um, they weren't doing the boys hair the way she wanted their hair to be, etc. It sounds like she and the Wests did not get on well with each other right from the start. And then 
in December of 2018, Ryan and her mom wanted to give Christmas presents to Orin and Orson, who at that time, of course, were still sincere and classic. And the Wests denied them and told them that they could not give them presents for the boys. And somewhere in there, the Wests must have uh, applied for adoption of the boys. Ryan had gone through the classes, etc., that she needed to do to get custody back. A sticking point was that she has what is known as a red card, which is a legal card for medical use. And they wanted her to go to counseling, according to her. And that, according to her, she went to the counseling place and they weren't going to counsel her for marijuana. It was legal and she had a medical card. So she had gone to see the judge, presenting the evidence that she was denied counseling services on the grounds that her usage was legal. And the judge did not agree with this. Anyway, at the same time, several of her family members were also going through the process of getting approved as being caregivers for the boys. And some of them actually even got approval. But a social worker determined that the boys were better off staying with the Wests and being adopted by the Wests because they had already settled into the home and were comfortable with the Wests and the other children. And so Ryan lost her parental rights and the boys were adopted and their names were changed to Orin and Orson. And as I said, that happened in April of 2019. We're going to talk about the West a little bit now. I don't know why current photos for the boys are not being used. On December 21st, 2020, which was a Monday, according to the parents' interviews, it sounds like they had had the boys go play on the back patio with chalk and that the boys somehow knew that they weren't to play in the dirt and they were trusting these little kids not to play in the dirt even though the dad himself was saying that these are rambunctious children anyway they stated that they noticed the boys not there around 4 30 or 4 45 they did a search around the house the yard um out in the neighborhood and that they called the police somewhere between 5.45 and 6. Um, I don't have the exact times here in front of me, and the 911 call has not been released to the public yet. 8 p.m. is the time that the police sent out a news release. The original had the description, but it omitted their names and photographs, and I'm not sure at what point those were added. They searched the home and in some of these videos that I'll be referencing there was a talk with the previous homeowner the one who sold the home to the Wests and this lady states that first off she felt that the couple was kind of sketchy to begin with she never saw the children or met the children and they never mentioned the children when they were going through the process and when you know they had come to see the home it was supposed to be a 30-day escrow and she states that there were problems with the financials behind it so it's kind of a nightmare for her it took 100 days when it was supposed to have only taken 30. she says that the side gate of the house closes itself that her husband put a contraption on the side gate so it will close itself that's the one that you see next to the garage it's a wooden one the other gate is in the back and it's also on the side but it is like big enough for a car to drive through and it's also got bars in it so i don't even know if it needs to be open for little kids to be able to slip through it so i'm not sure exactly which gate is being referenced as being the one the dad is saying he thinks the kids went out of also the previous owner states that there is a one car garage in back of the house and that there is a room in the top of the garage accessed from the roof and she was hoping 
that police had checked that out. And I'm sure that they probably have by now. Also, she stated in one of her interviews that she spoke on the phone to one of her former neighbors who I think lives across the street from the West's home. And they stated that they were looking over their security footage and that they have footage of Trezell West leaving the house on Sunday night, carrying the boys and putting them into the van before he drove away. I noticed that in the interview with the police chief, one of the people asking questions asked him if he had heard about that and he said that he would look into those allegations. California does have an adoption subsidy for adopting foster kids and it could be around $1,000 a month per child, more if the kids have any sorts of disabilities and I do not know whether these kids do have disabilities. I do know that their biological mom was talking about how smart they were. She stated that Oren had learned sign language when he was one. Now, I don't know if he learned sign language for fun or if it was because he has some sort of speech impediment or if it's a hearing issue. Uh, no one's mentioned anything of the sort though, so... Anyway, uh, going through other concerns that people have had or questions that they brought up. Um, Luminol. Yes, it was brought up that Luminol was used and the chief of police stated that the Luminol did not show anything. So there was no sign of blood in the home. The dogs apparently scented the kids in the home, but not outside of the home. And I do not know if that includes the back patio. I don't know if he's saying that, that they aren't scented being outside of the house at all, or if he just means they didn't leave the property. Um, addressing the body language of the adoptive parents, it does look like it's some sort of um, dishonesty or covering or something at first, but then when you take it into context, it's very difficult to tell what's going on with them, and it would have been a lot better if there had been a private interview with them away from the crowd, because what was happening there is that they are just feet away from the biological family who were uh, very upset and accusing them of doing something to the boys, etc. So it's entirely possible that what we were seeing is just the reaction to being in that sort of situation. Another thing is that the dad was stating that he was wishing that he could go into the homes of his neighbors to check for the boys, just to be sure. But at the same time that the neighbors and the family of the biological mother are accusing them of doing something with the kids, it's either a diversion on the part of the parents or they really believe that some of the neighbors have gotten access to the children. I know a lot of this is going to come down to electronics forensics and the neighbor's cameras maybe doorbell cams or something will have caught whether there was anybody in the neighborhood, whether the kids were seen wandering off, and whether the kids were ever at that house. And that was a big question of mine. This whole thing seems weird. I do hope these little babies are found soon, and I hope that they are not harmed wherever they are, but I'm afraid that things are not really looking good at this point. And there were more searches this weekend. There's been such an awesome turnout of volunteers from the community, from outside the community, um, just carrying people out there and they searched the desert and they did find a gift bag with Orson's name on it 
and it may or may not be evidence. An officer took pictures of it. They've taken it into custody. It may have been something that was from the big memorial wall. Uh, also, there were some tracks that were also documented and a knife was found out in the desert and I think they found socks or something else. And those are all being taken to Bakersfield. They've all been cataloged by the police and they'll be investigated also. I'm also very concerned slash confused by the state of California missing persons website where I went and looked up the two boys and was looking at their information and it states of course their current names and also known as their birth names but it's stating that Oren is three feet tall and weighs 35 pounds while Orson is two and a half feet tall and 40 pounds and it, it just seems a little bit off it just seemed a bit strange to me but at least they no longer are listing them as being exactly the same height and exactly the same weight i'll keep you posted on this story as it unfolds and i will keep digging and seeing what i can find for you thank you for watching another day in the car with jules